SMU. <laughs> As someone who picked Pitt, I apologize profusely. Let's hope Bill, W, Bryson, and others did not hear that. <laughs> KJ was great. Brashard Smith was great. I mean, I, I thought it was oh, it was pretty much over that Brashard Smith super long touchdown around the second quarter. I was like, right. all right, I think we're done. Yeah. Uh, even just the first drive, SMU was like. <laughs> They just dominated, Mac. They absolutely yeah. dominated. What was it like to be there? It looked electric. It was fun. Uh, the, the atmosphere was electric. I mean, it was the, the most people. We've been there twice. Uh, but, but even talking with others, Bill Armstrong and Coach and, you know, a bunch of people that, that have been there, done that, um, they said that was one of the best crowds they've ever seen, you know, ever uh, at that place. And the interaction, like the students were singing the, uh, the, the, the national anthem, which was cool. They said they've never in the history ever seen that, um, you know, just the amount of people and, and the juice that was there. So that was great. And then, as you mentioned, the, the ponies get off and run in a hurry. I mean, explode in the second quarter. Um, I think they scored 20 something points, but it was just big play after big play. 24. after big play. Yeah. And uh, wh whatever they wanted, run it, pass it, throw it. And I was very impressed with the bounce back, you know, of Kevin Jennings and the, you know, just attitude. We, we had asked a couple of players and EJ and Eddie asked a couple of different people and, you know, just said, you know, how was he in practice and, and this week? And, you know, was he tentative or hesitant? And they're like, oh, he was still ripping it and doing his thing. And I said, that's great. And, uh, you know, just hearing about, you know, his coaches and how they handle it at all. And for him to bounce back against this defense that literally did the same thing but worse to another team that he just experienced, you're thinking, okay, this might be danger. And he carved him up. I mean, 300-plus yards, throwing the ball all over the place, really making smart decisions. Um, and then to be able to run it. I think Pitt was the second or third uh, run defense in the ACC. And those guys, I mean, they were running like it was Swiss cheese. I mean, they were, they were dominating. Really impressive by the offensive line getting out and – you know, doing their thing. And, and again, when you have a guy as talented as Smith, I mean, he, he's so good. He's such a weapon, a lot like Desmond Reed. Um, you know, it was just his night and his day and they played at a great level and same thing for the, the, the SMU defense. I thought they were fantastic. And I know Pitt scored, you know, 14 in the fourth, which, you know, it, it was total domination. The score looks like that was, a little yeah. closer, but it was, it was butt whipping time. And uh, they, they dominated, they dominated all, all day. Richard Smith is so good. We talk about him. I, I'm not sure nationally. It, it's like nationally people are starting to talk about SMU. I saw Nick Saban yeah. said that Kevin Jennings was one of the more underrated players or maybe the most underrated player in the country. Yeah. And so people are starting to talk about Jennings. And then Richard Smith is just, he's a weapon. He's, he's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Des Reed was like the weapon coming into this game that we talked about. They really limited Des Reed. They did a great yeah. job with that. Um, and it felt like Pitt came back their defense specifically came back down to earth. Mm -hmm. you know, we talked about like the Syracuse game was a little fluky. I think right. anytime you have five picks, it, it right. is a little fluky. So they came, I still thought maybe they'd force a turnover or two, but SMU had zero turnovers, which is yeah. huge. And that was that, probably the most impressive part. Yeah. Mac, I mean, you and I were talking about that even off air, like <laughs> mentally as a locker room to be able to recover from that. And I think it was huge that they won the game while having six turnovers. Because right. it's not like you're going to gloss it under the rug, but you can still maintain your confidence and momentum. For sure. And the fact that I didn't turn over was a really good sign for SMU. Yeah. I'm so impressed with SMU. I I thought, we all talked about for it, right? Sure. We thought they could come in here, maybe finish eight and four. Like that was yeah. what we were hopeful for SMU. Um, they've already won eight games. They're eight and one. And they've, they. it's not like they've dominated. Like the only team they truly dominated, well, you could say Pitt, um, Stanford, of course, and Florida State, who's a disaster. But they've won close games. They've won on the road. I just yeah. I didn't expect this. And as we talked with Bill, if they had just found a way to beat BYU, which, by the way, was just the, what, second start for Kevin Jennings and was such a weird game. If they Might be the Big 12 champs. I mean, yeah, and yeah, and it's still a good loss, but it's just incredible what they've done. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I, I think uh, it's probably the greatest – transition from g5 yeah. to p5 ever like you, when, when you look at all of it when you see you know other examples and and just the way that they've done it i mean it's, it's been fascinating legitimately i mean that they have an unbelievable shot to 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 play and compete in the acc championship and, and make a playoff run. i mean that already this morning you know clemson out smu in and all the the playoff predictions and and the other mm -hmm. seedings and the way things go so that's just how it goes. You know, that, that we've mentioned 
um, you know, all throughout that this was a playoff game. And, and it's going to be that way for a lot of teams moving forward. I mean, there there is no more significant regular season than college football. Even in this expanded playoff era, this lighting is going crazy right now. Uh, hotel life. Now I'm like in the dark hiding. I don't know what to do. But anyway, uh, they okay. played at a super high level. They played at a super high level. And it was, um, it was really fun to watch and fun to be in person and see that. It was, without a doubt. Mac, are you and Bryson like – are y'all boys now? I saw you were, we're holding boys. the U.S. Open trophy. Cool. You know, he we, we saw each other from afar, uh, kind of met in the middle, and, uh, you know, just embraced. He was like, dang, I forgot how big you are. I was like, dude, it's all good. You're awesome. <laughs> and then he's like, uh, you want to hold the trophy? He said, yeah, I do. I Absolutely. Do. It was kind of, it was you, smaller than I thought. Smaller than I thought. Interesting. Did cool. you show a him? A nice chalice. A nice chalice, if you will. A chalice. Did you show him the video of you driving the ball in the Winnie the Pooh suit or no? Well, I didn't want to, um, I wasn't going to say intimidate him, but that's like a total joke. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to embarrass myself. I didn't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> I think that's a smart move. Smart move. Yeah. But uh, the Shambo coming to the Summer Guest <laughs> Series uh, soon. Yeah, Hopefully. maybe. Maybe I didn't just message him. I posted it on uh, Instagram and just messaged him like, great to see you. We'll see if he responds. Uh, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe we get him on. Or maybe we could do the uh, break 50 challenge. I don't know if you've seen that. Graham Lincoln, mm -hmm. Mac Lane yeah. with Bryson DeChambeau. That'd be cool. Amazing. All right. Stay tuned, guys. That would be epic.